On to our next topic. British weaponry and military vehicles could be manufactured in the Ukraine under plans that would mark a deepening of the country's ties with NATO. But some critics say that this is simply stoking the fire and further provoking stronger reactions from Putin. And earlier this week, Ukrainian President Zelensky renewed his call for fighter jets during a visit to the UK, uh, we where he addressed both houses of parliament. But Defence Secretary Ben Wallace says there will be no immediate transfer of UK fighter jets to the Ukraine, but he did not completely rule out sending aircraft to the Ukraine. Now, still with me in the studio is Peter and Sebastian. Uh, I'll start with you this time, Sebastian. What do you make of this? Are we stoking the flames of World War Three? Well, um, I don't think we're sticking the, world, the flames of World War Three. That would be Russia. Um, obviously, the West can make things worse for its response. We do need to think about that. I mean, my biggest concern in all this, it's, it's one thing to send weapons to Ukraine, mm. um, although I would say we've so degraded our military capacity in a number of areas that we simply aren't in a position to give a certain sorts of weapons, including jets. Um, but I have... A, a specific concerns about the idea that we should manufacture mm. British kit in Ukraine. We're talking about one of the world's most corrupt countries. We're talking about a conflict zone yeah. where the, the factories would be vulnerable to attack by Russia. Um, and we're all, and um, again, it's one of those so many, as in so many cases, we're, we're driven by sentiment mm. when there is, you know, and there is clearly a, a moral commitment that we have to help Ukraine. But we don't know what's going to happen in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years. Do we want to, you know, take, you know, things like, you know, the Eurofighter Typhoon, you know, this is something hundreds of, you know, hundred, over 100 billion has been spent on this project. You know, we're talking, you know, British tanks, stuff where we've poured investment research into them. Mm. Um, are we, are we, do we really want to transfer that with little regulation and oversight into Ukraine? And I don't think we do. I mean, Sebastian raises some very good points, Peter. Uh, I, I would suggest that we are driven by sentiment to the point that actually we're seeing what we're seeing right now is hero worship. It's idolatry around Zelensky and, and the Ukraine. And many people rightly are concerned about Ukraine citizens and Russian citizens in this war. However, we're putting Zelensky on a pedestal and forgetting that this is the leader of one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Should we really be producing British uh, weaponry over there? There's a lot there, so I wouldn't call it idolatry at all. I think that's completely the wrong word. But if Zelensky is on a pedestal, I think that's the right place for him to be because I think his leadership has been phenomenal and there's actually kind of a consensus across the political spectrum about that. Um, it's, it's very interesting listening to previous answers because I think one thing we can all agree on is we, we don't know what will happen next. But it's clear that um, any UK government, you know, before or after a general election under Truss, Johnson, Sunak or Labour will go as far as it possibly can to support Zelensky without having a direct military confrontation with Putin. And I do say Putin because our, our, our fight is not with ordinary Russian folk who have no, no say in this, it's no. with the leadership. But, yeah, but it's uh, not our fight. Yeah. We're, we're so, not at war. No, we're not at war, and I'm very glad we're not at war, but it's still a moral issue, and that's why I believe the level of support is going to be ramped up, because we're... we're um, making pledges now that perhaps six or nine months ago weren't really conceived of. Um, but, of course, the, the, we know the war is going on three months, six months, now it's a year. Could it be two years? Um, clearly, um, Putin has tacked back and he's had to adjust his aims. And he now, it looks like he might now settle for trying to partition part of the country, which is still a completely wicked act. But I come back to my starting point, which is the British government, whoever is in charge, is going to have to keep um, upping the level of... Um, militarily uh, and personnel support uh, up to the point that Ukraine wins because it is inconceivable for the West and for Europe that Ukraine does not win. That is interesting to me, Sebastian. The, the idea that the only way for this war to ever be over is if Ukraine wins. Who's pushing for peace? Uh, well, I mean, I think I mean, victory is... I mean, I think probably what will happen is both sides are going to declare victory. Um, I, I think all that we... I think we don't need to concern ourselves with what... Ukraine wants and what Russia wants, mm. except as a secondary concern. But we need to be concerned with what do we want as the NATO alliance and as Britain. And I think what we want is an end to this conflict as soon as possible and for Putin to not so advance his position um, that it's a threat to Ukraine and the West going forwards. I would call for a sitting down and talking and looking for a peace uh, arrangement, but I don't think many people are calling for that right now.